wonderful people. It is Ms. Berger from Larkspur Middle School. And I'm joined by Mr. Lamb, also from the Larkspur Middle School. Today we're going to talk about ordering and comparing fractions, decimals, Ooh, and fractions, decimals, I'm and sorry, percent. Just ordering. Just order. Just ordering. We're just going to order them today. Just ordering fractions, decimals, and percents, which means our learning target is I can order <laughs> fractions, decimals, and percents using the proper mathematical symbol. The proper mathematical symbol is a big part of this. So let's talk about those first. Let's talk about the symbols. Uh, can I go first? Sure. But then you're going to draw your little alligator and your little okay. things. I don't do that. I know. Every um, time. You change the I know. I know. Uh, she changed the screen. She did that part. Where is it? it there right it is. There. Thank you. Okay. okay. So when we talk about the proper mathematical symbols, really when we're talking about ordering or comparing, when we talk about you know mathematical symbols, we're talking about the greater than and less than symbols. Mm -hmm. Okay. Greater than symbols less than symbols. Now, Ms. Berger has a way of remembering which right. one's which. The opening always faces the bigger number, right? So you can either use like an alligator, right? The alligator eats the bigger number, or you can go Pac-Man. You know, Pac-Man's chasing that bigger number. So if like we were to compare ourselves age-wise, right? Miss Berger would be less than Mr. Lamb. Alligator eats that bigger number. Yes. But even if we switched places, Right? He's still older. So now the alligator would face this way, eating the bigger number. So the yeah. alligator always eats, eats the that bigger, bigger number. number. So the mouth of the alligator will always point towards the bigger number. Can we change sides? Because this is going to freak me out this over here. This is weird, here. yeah. We like our own size. That's right. All right, so if we wanted to put numbers in order, if you have a fraction, a decimal, and a percent, the first step is to put them all in the same form. Yeah, you gotta find that thing you like to use. Yeah, so you can, the easiest is either decimals or percents. You yes. don't wanna convert <laughs> them all to fractions. Don't wanna mess with no fractions. You don't want fractions. So I'm gonna do the first one with percents. And it says, let's order a few numbers using the proper symbol. Should we do ascending or descending? Let's do ascending. Okay, so if we were to ascend, Ascend means to go up. Up. So we ascend we're upward. Least to greatest, right? So I'm going to rewrite these numbers as, as decimals. decimals, right? So I'm going to start well, with that one's easy. I'm going to start with the easiest one, right? So if I have a percent and I want a decimal, think back to that Dr. Pepper, right? That little kind of cheat, my favorite drink. So I have a percent, I want a decimal, so I go one two spaces, Beyonce style, to the left, to the left. So here's my decimal. I'm going to go one, two. I'm going to bring it here, and I'm just going to rewrite it. 0 0.13 or 13 hundredths, if I said that math. And, and one way that you know that you wrote it the right way is if you move the decimal point in the wrong way, and remember, 13% means it's part of something, right? It's 13 parts out of 100. So if you end up with a whole number, if you went the other way and end up with like 1,300, well that, you can't have 1,300 parts of a pizza. No, unless you have a lot of pizza. Lots of pizza. Lots of pizza. Lots of pizza. So let's make this fraction a decimal. And no we, one likes that. We have to do long division. So one over eight, the fraction bar is just another way of saying division. So that's just one, and I'm gonna add my zeros, divided by eight. So now, long division style. If I have one, could I give you eight? No. Nope. Well, no. My decimal goes to the top. How many groups of eight are in 10? I one. think one. I can make one group. One times eight is eight. I subtract, 10 minus eight is two, and I bring down that zero. So now, how many groups of eight are in 20? Two. Two. Two times eight is 16. This is why we're supposed to know our facts. And then we bring down that last zero, and really you only have to go to the hundredth place. Well, because no, here sorry, is to the thousandth place. Well, yeah, but we'll, let's take a look at a shortcut here. Hold on, because hold, well, on. hold on. Let me finish this, and this then you can finish it. Stop. I'm your dad. You gotta be quiet. Oh my yeah. gosh. Notice that the second number here is a three, and the second number here is a three. That's true. We could. We stop really could that. stop because we know that two makes it smaller. That's true, Mr. Lamb. But, but now, we why don't you go ahead and show them how to go to the We are being good mathematical students. We yes, take we it to thousands place. How many groups of eight are in 40? Five. Five. 
So then I could really, really stop. Well, I'm kind of glad you did that because one of the things I like to always tell students is it's hard to compare 135, 125, and 13. Yeah. So really, since that says 0 0.135, really it would be nice if these also went out three digits. Well, to the so, thousands place. Thank you. And so I'm going to add a zero here because I like to compare numbers that are the same size. That's true. So here are my three numbers. I have 125, and I'll put a decimal point in front of it because that's 125 thousandths. Okay, I have 130 thousandths, and I have 135 thousandths. Now, if my wife was here, I would be in big time trouble. Because if I don't put a zero in front of these, I get yelled at when we get home. That's right. So now let's place them in order. Mr. Wayne kind of did it for us, right? 125, 130, 135. But we write our answer, answer in the original form. Yes, we do. So 125 was the smallest, or 125 thousandths, which was 1 eighth. So 1 eighth is less than, oop, I'm going that one. So 130, which was at 13%. That's why I kind of write those numbers underneath where they correspond to. And then 135 thousandths. And then that uses mathematical symbols and the original form. Ooh, I like the way you circled your answer with that cloud. Makes it really easy for the teacher to see how you answered the question. That's true. All right, so let's do another one. Okay. Should we do this one or should we do a big one? Let's do a big one because I think we showed them how to do Let's a little. Let's do a big one. Let's descend this time. Ooh, descend. That means you're up here and you're descending. So, it's yeah. kind of the opposite of us. Remember, descend down, right? Ooh, I like the way you came D -D. up with that. So it's going to be greatest to least. Greatest to least. All right, Mr. Lamb. Well, we'll take the wheel. I, I also see, I like decimals because I think decimals are like a nice, easy, middle of the road thing to use. Yeah. So I already have one decimal, so we're just going to leave that one alone for now. Two and a half, I, I'm glad we put two and a half in here because that's an easy decimal, right? Yeah. That's two and one half, otherwise known as 2.5. Okay, now this one has three decimal points, right? 345,000. I can't tell you how many times when I had students doing this that they would look at this and they would look at this and they would think, well, 345 got to be bigger than 5. Yeah, but that's not But five. if I that's add these two zeros and make them always the same size. That's now 500. That's right. Now 500, definitely bigger than 345. Definitely. And then I have 280%. I think that was supposed to be 2.8%. No, oh, 200. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's, that, that's a lot of percent. That's a lot. That's yeah, two whole pizzas that's in 80% right. of a third. Pizza. I guess I wasn't thinking of it there for a second. So, this is now, again, what's our rule for changing a, a you know, percent to a decimal? We put the decimal point in. And then we, we go, leave. Beyonce. We go <laughs> to the left, to the left. You know, you can say that, but every time I say that, I get in trouble. So, we got 2.8, and. And again, we want to make it. To the thousands place. To the place. thousands place. So. so, the nice thing is, these are all twos. Yeah. Which makes it easy because then we can kind of thumb around. Yeah. But if they weren't, then what would we go by? Like, if this was a three, well, then obviously it would have to be the biggest number, right? But we always look at the first number first. Stay the same. And since now these are the same, we can look at the second number. So, okay, so we have, and we're descending, which means we're going down, so we're looking for, for the, the biggest, biggest number. number. Well, I know eight's bigger than five or three. All right, so we're going to start with the eight, and again, I'm going to write it in its original form. So, 280% so is now greater than. That's two and eight tenths of a pizza. So, yeah. two whole pizzas That's and pizza. eight tenths of another pizza. That's a lot of pizza. That's probably what I'm going to probably buy for lunch today. Probably not. Well, I'm going to buy pizza. And then the next one, two and a half, and we have to write it in that original form. Right, is greater than then this little guy right here, which is two point three four or five. two and three hundred and forty-five thousand. Now, one thing that I was wanted to bring up, and, and since you're really not allowed to use these to solve the problem, it is a great tool to use to check 
the problem. That's right. And what is that, Mr. Lamb? What is that? That is your handy dandy calculator. The handiest of dandiest calculators. And if you don't have one of these handheld types, you have. Is, well, we don't have them. Well, well, that's true. But they've you, already seen the Desmos calculator. Well, yeah, but just in case, you do have that Desmos calculator in class link. That's right, class link, Desmos calculator. You can put in, you know, like, one divided by eight. And there you go. It will show you what your decimal, decimal is. is. So again, we don't want you to use that right away. But if you're not sure, if you have some number like, oh, stop, let's go back to that. Oh, okay. Okay, since I told you not to do it, now we're going to make you do it. I'm, I'm so confusing. Okay, let's do five sevens. Five divided by seven. So five divided by seven, oh. see, that would be a really hard one to do. Yeah. If I sat here and I said, okay, I'm going to do five sevens. So five go, you know, seven goes into five once and then blah, 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 blah. That's oh cool. my God, that's a lot. Let's wrap it up, Mr. Lamb. Okay, let's wrap it up. Okay, so anyway, Desmos calculator is a great way to do some of the hard ones or to check them all. That's true. That is very true. So why don't we go back to our thing? All right, so if you are confused as to what to do next, if you're still kind of like you want to watch another video. We always have a second one for you. Usually, so let's watch another video in your slide presentation. But if you're ready, then move on and, and start let's working get the on your practice, practice done. Make sure you log on through class later.